Hey everyone, welcome back to episode six of ProVol USA, the Puerto Rican League with Ronica Stone. So Ronica is an all-American middle blocker from the University of Oregon. She's trained with Team USA multiple times throughout her volleyball career, and she is now going into or playing in her third professional season with Pink and De Corazal in Puerto Rico. Um, I was lucky enough to be on a team with her for two years, and she's not only an amazing volleyball player, but an even more incredible human being. So with that being said, Ronica, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. That was such such a good intro, Brooke. <laughs> oh, thank you. We're just going to jump right into things. I really want to know throughout your three years as a professional, if you could tell me about some of the differences between some of the clubs that you've been a part of. And you've played overseas in Europe, you've played in the United States, and now you've played for Puerto Rico. Oof. Well, yeah, that's tough. I have a um, different experience when it comes to overseas and European volleyball, just because I went during the peak of COVID. So I'm sure everyone else has way better things to say. I was just there when it was locked down. We had a 6 p.m. curfew, not our team, like the city I was in. So once we got done with our second practice, it was pretty much a ghost town outside. I love volleyball, but like, it's nice to get away from volleyball sometimes, but there was really no getting away from it. It was just practice, apartment, practice, apartment, practice, apartment. But it was cool being there, um, experiencing a different culture. I had, there was only one other American on my team. And then the rest, it was French girls, Serbians, Russians, Ukraine. Thankfully, everyone knew English. And my coach was amazing. I had a lot of respect for the staff and um, just the level of play there. It is a very long season, though. Um, Eight, eight and a half months, you know takes a toll um, especially (laughs) especially when you know you don't have a social life and you can't see family and there's time differences so that was difficult and um, I'm sure if I were to go back it would be a completely different experience but yeah that was my first experience and and then I had the opportunity to play in AU which was an amazing experience Um, so much shorter and it's funny because we played I think the same amount of games that I had done in France in really? AU, I think. Yes, it's a because we season. play like, it's a five week season and we're playing, well, including the scrimmage week, which is only one extra game, but you're playing three games a week, whereas in France, we played one game a week. So, I mean, playing three games a week is gonna be hard regardless of the sets, but yeah, just really fast. Uh, You get to play with a lot of different people. You don't get to hold on to losses like you would Mm -hmm. in um, other leagues because you'll never play that team again. (laughs) Odds are you'll be teammates with the people on the other team that you might have lost to. So I think mentally it puts you in a different headspace because it is a league based off of statistics. So you're really trying to be as smart as you can. But it was a great experience. I loved meeting all the girls. I loved playing like I took a year, really like a year off of volleyball. So being able to come back and having that be my first time playing in a while was great. Girls that I had played with before during USA or played against in college. So really cool. Um, and then now in Puerto Rico, it's, it's, I love it. The league is a little shorter this year because um, they had a couple teams who were in the league last year, um, whether it was like issues with management or COVID um, that didn't return for this season so there's five okay. teams in this in the league this year um but I love the energy um, the fans are incredible especially the fans for my team I'm not even being biased they're just they love volleyball the city that I play in Corozal um they say is the capital of volleyball like they have statues of people playing vol. like uh, I, I'm sure the woman is like a very famous woman and I should know who she is um but it really is the capital of volleyball and it's so cool how much like love that they have and support that they have for the fans and that's something that I didn't get in my first year because with COVID there were no fans there were fans but like not that being here and really having fans for the first time in my professional career and them being as passionate as they are is incredible and being able to be in the finals in my first year here is a blessing and I'm just excited to continue playing yeah. What are the advantages as playing in Puerto Rico as opposed to overseas or in a shorter season, the five-week season for AU? 
I'm a homebody, so I love being with my family and close to my family. And playing in AU gave me a chance to have them come watch me play professionally for the first time, which was really cool. Um, and even in Puerto Rico, like, it's still a U.S. territory, so they don't need they have passports, but if anyone, if my friends or family wanted to come, they don't need a passport to come and visit and travel is easy. And it, yeah, it's like time zones are fine. So I think that's cool. And also it, it really just depends on what your lifestyle is going to be. I think overseas is an amazing option for girls, women who want to do that and pursue that. I think everyone should give it a go. Um, and you know have their own experiences not listening to other people's experience maybe take it but also experience it for yourself because mm -hmm. some people love it some people hate it yeah I think it's it's cool it's a shorter season so you have a lot more free time it just depends on what you're doing with your free time in the off season whereas overseas like your off season is so short you have your time to relax and it's just like getting back to training so mm -hmm. There's advantages and disadvantages. It just depends on like yeah. where you fall. Mm -hmm. And I mean, being a homebody and being like with a significant other, just wanting to visit family more often, the three month okay. season is just a lot more easy, both on your mind and on your body. So that's something that is awesome to have an option, especially with League One that hopefully will be starting within the next couple of years. And you're one of the ambassadors for League One Volleyball. So tell me what you've been working with with them and like talking about and just some things that we should be expecting in the next couple of years. I'm so excited for League One Volleyball to be starting up in the next couple of years, really hoping for 2024. Um, I think it's just another opportunity to have more volleyball in the States. And it's uh, as opposed to AU, which I also think is a great um, league. I think it's supposed to be longer. So you'll have a longer season with more teams and it's not, you're not switching teams. Um, AU is really unique where you get to play with a lot of different people. You're kind of going to be staying on your own team. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited just because if I thought about, playing professionally just when I was in college, uh, AU and League One, those didn't exist. And so mm -hmm. now for girls who don't feel like going overseas um, or don't think they could do a long season or don't think they can do time away from their family, like they have an option to be playing in the States. And um, League One has done a lot. Um, they're all moving in the right direction. I'm excited for it to all come to life and um, to hopefully be a part of it one day because, you know, I, I thought before if it was only overseas, I didn't know how long I would still be playing. Um, but now with all these options, being able to play close to home, then I could see myself playing for a lot longer than originally. I've heard a lot of players say that. And even the players that have competed in Athletes Unlimited, they've had such a positive experience, but that's only a five week season. It's not really, really realistic if you're wanting to continue to play professionally year round. So what would it mean to you to be able to play in uh, League One Volleyball and be in a full volleyball season here in front of your family in the United States and some American fans? You know, it's something that I've always dreamed about because you know, my dad is a professional or he was a professional athlete. And so my idea of what professional sports was going to be like, honestly, I set the bar really high uh, <laughs> <laughs> for what I thought a professional, like a professional female athlete's life is which it's, it's not, um, honestly, overseas is a wake up call. Like the, what you get in college, you are, we are spoiled. We are spoiled rotten in college. And, um, when you get overseas, it's just like when it comes to facilities and I mean, they do the best that they can. It's just that in the U S we do have a lot more resources. So I'm excited for, uh, the vision that league one has to make, you know, the dreams that, I once had as a child and I mean, as a teenager, mm -hmm. as a young adult, like come true. Uh, and I think they're trying to do their best to have League One Volleyball and AU coexist with each other. So girls will have the opportunity okay. to play in League One and then afterwards play in AU. And then maybe if Puerto Rico continues to have be a summer league which um it's only the second year they've been in the summer usually they're in January but if they continue then boom you have three options to play and it's almost like you're playing in a full like a 
overseas long length season, but you've just touched three different seasons, which is like three different contracts, three different ways of money coming in. And I think it's just more opportunities, the better it is. I'm so happy that you're on today because the Puerto Rican league is going on right now. It's the only professional volleyball league around the world that's happening. And let's congratulate you, first of all, for being in the finals. Can you talk about a little bit of the setup of the final? So it's you and it's, um, remind me, Criolas, Criolas de Cagua. Right? Okay, perfect. Well, can you tell me a little bit about the setup and the series of the matches that you're going to be playing? Yes, it's a best of seven series, which is wild. That's how <laughs> semis were too, because we already played them four times during regular season. So playing them four plus times again, it's just, we know each other. Uh, mm. We split games during regular season. Then, so I think it'll be highly competitive and it's we play and then we have practice it's play practice play practice play practice play practice so it's just once it starts uh it's really just all go like you're into it and it's uh you really have no time for rest and at this point everyone's tired and so the games will be home in a way they were talking about um, after the first two games, having it at a mutual spot. Um, so we'll see. I think it's just hard because they, they're they guessing that this is going to be the most packed finals yet, just because it's um, Binken has, I think, the most championships of all time. Um, they had a lot of championships, I think, like 70s, 80s, 90s, where Caguas has really taken over the 2000s and that's where all, mm -hmm. a lot of their championships come from and Pinkin also just came back uh, three years ago so our owner um, brought the team back three years ago and you know their first year I'm not really sure how they did uh, second year I think they lost in the quarters and now for like their thir third year being back for us to get back to the finals which has always been the goal and I'm so excited, especially with the fandom, the fanaticos, they call them. Caguas has recently, they've won the last six or seven championships. So, you know, they really are the beast of the league. Everyone thought of them as unbeatable, which is amazing, like how much um, they've accomplished over the years, but no one is unbeatable. And mm -hmm. I love, I love the competition. I love I love the energy. I'm ready to get after it. And I know it's just going to be a back and forth battle. Um, they're going to bring it. There's some really good um, players on their side. Um, Americans too. Adora and I played her in college. Taylor Sambothi, who they just mm -hmm. picked up. Um, yeah. Tell me about that. Cause she was playing for another team, right? Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of like <laughs> stuff that happens in Puerto Rico where it's just like, all right, well, it's Puerto Rico. <laughs> But she, there can be trades that happen within um, like the local players. But when um, another reinforcement is brought to a team, there either has to be like a releasement of someone else on the team, another local or reinforcement from that team or an injury that brings someone in. So Gagawas originally had Adora and Cat Bell as their reinforcements and then before the semis they released cat i'm not really sure what the reason was for releasing cat and um to start the finals they signed taylor and she yeah she was on juncos they had lost in the semis to caguas which is uh which is fun but taylor played for caguas last year and um they didn't end up being able to she wasn't able to play in the championship game i there was Something that happened with San Juan, uh, the team they were supposed to play, where um, championships were canceled. So this gives her a chance to actually play for a championship. So I'm happy for her. We're friends. We met during AU. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, I'm trying to murder her. <laughs> on that side. Yeah. So can you tell me about the foreigner policy in Puerto Rico? Is it three foreigners allowed per team? It's two except for the team that finished last, they were allowed three. And I don't okay. know if they're keeping that the same rule for this um, upcoming season. 
Um, but yes, it's two foreigners for each team. We have, it's me, Peyton Caffrey as the foreigners on my team. You see Brittany Abercrombie and you think like she's a foreigner because, you know, USC, like she's a California girl. But her mom was actually born in uh, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. She was here for a good six months. So she qualifies as Puerto Rican, which is mm -hmm. cool. And she gets to play on their national teams. So Brittany's a local, so we get two. Okay, so how's it been like competing with other Americans and you are having more Americans on your team than you ever have and overseas, you're lucky to have one or two. So how's that experience been like being close to home and competing with other Americans that you've played with in college? Um, I, it's been really cool, um, especially with AU. Mm -hmm. It's girls that you've grown up either playing against in club and college playing with and so just being able to see those familiar faces on the other side of the net, it's, I think it brings out another level of like competitiveness mm -hmm. because it's girls that you've, you've know, like you've right. seen their game, like, you know, their game and you want to beat them at their game, <laughs> like essentially. So, yeah. and then you join with it for AU, then you join forces with them and it's like, okay, mm -hmm. how do we like team up to beat these new people at the mm -hmm. game? So um, I think it's really cool, especially like being in Puerto Rico and seeing um, like the other Americans on the other side of the net. I think it's just, it, it brings out like a more competitive nature because mm -hmm. um, as the reinforcements, you're supposed to be like, quote unquote, like the best, like you're bringing, you're coming in supposing, supposedly supposed to be um, like one of the top players. That's why they're bringing you in. And so you're going against Americans that you know who are supposed to be the top players on their team and so it's just like I'm going to prove that I'm better than you <laughs> like mm -hmm. who's the best American <laughs> in the league <laughs> but um I love it because afterwards obviously we're talking um after the games it's just like no bad blood at least mm -hmm. for me there isn't um <laughs> so being able to talk and you know compare different um, team chemistries and relationships like how are things going on your side I think it's like a lot more open there's a lot more open dialogue in terms of like what's going on um, with your team like how is your contract and you can just really like bounce off things and it's not in jealousy or trying to keep information from each other but everyone's more open whereas I feel like when you're overseas and you're talking about more personal things like team issues or contract issues like people would rather keep it to themselves. And mm -hmm. um, it's just like, you don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like you don't talk about your contracts. Like you don't talk about like what's going on with your team. And I'm just like, why? I don't know, <laughs> like, why not? I, mean, I think it's only beneficial if we do talk about these things because right. if I know like how much you're making, that's not gonna change how much I'm, it's not changing how much you're making. Um, it helps me with knowing how much I think I should should make and like negotiating with my team and just like mm -hmm. seeing that you get this or you saw that I got what I got and like just negotiations because at the end of the day like we're all trying to help each other and we're trying to make the best volleyball possible so um I think having Americans and being around it's just like helps open up the dialogue and you're way more comfortable talking about certain things I feel like you've had such a amazing experience in Puerto Rico thank you so much for coming on the show today and I want to wish you luck as you wrap up the end of your finals this season and everyone who's tuned in the finals are starting now I will drop the date below thank you so much for tuning in to Pro Volley USA we'll see you next week on episode seven <laughs>